This video demonstrates the cage implantation. We will start by bending the flanges of the cage to fit the ilium. We place the inserter into the center hole of the cage to stabilize it. Then we used a round, narrow tip tamp to bend the flange holes to fit properly to the side of the ilium. Exact fit is not necessary as the screws will help suck the flanges down to the bone. I need to make a hole for the teardrop. Okay, one tone, please. Okay, you want to show this to me. Okay, so here's the teardrop. Or close to it, I should say. Right, you see that? Yep. Yep. Hammer, please. One moment, sir. First. Hammer, please. Next, we will start to fill the dome holes first in order to compress the cage into the acetabulum. We want to make sure that we angle these screws away from where the flange screws will go so that we can fit as many screws as possible both through the dome and especially through the flange screws into the ilium. Yep. Okay. So this will See how it pushes the, that out, squeezes that in. Okay. Hold this plant, please. Can I take another drill, please? We make every attempt possible to assure that the screws go through the cage, into the allograft, and into host bone. After filling the dome screws, we use a homin to attract the gluteus muscles so we can place the flange screws into the ilium. Here is the acetabulum gap cage in place with multiple screws inside the cup. Superiorly, we can see the flanges with multiple screws inside each one of the flanges, as seen here. Here is an intraoperative radiograph to assure proper position of all the screws within the graft. Here we have a final picture of the screws within the acetabulum, as well as the screws within the flanges in the ilium. Quite the uh, wax. Okay, so go ahead and film this. So just putting wax in the screw holes. I have had the opportunity to come back and take these cages out on occasion. So you always want to make sure you have access to the screw holes. You need to have access. So the cement doesn't get in there. Is that all of them? This is a final picture of all the screw heads filled with bone wax. In this view from the overhead camera, we finished applying all the bone wax to the screws. We are now ready for cementation of the polyethylene. Be sure to make sure that the cement is fairly runny so that you have ample time to work with it. This also helps the cement get behind the holes of the cage to help provide further stability for the polyethylene cup when it's implanted. We want to try to avoid cement going into the surrounding tissues. 
and after we have cement around the cup we are ready to implant the polyethylene we will now see sequential videos that are showing us holding the proper position of the polyethylene while we're allowing the cement to dry. Of course, making sure to remove any excess cement to prevent external impingement and third body wear. We can now remove the femoral stem from the anterior pelvis where it has been for the entire procedure and start to place our trial heads and reduce the hip. Patient comes out full extension. And he bends. Full extension, external rotation. Stable. 45 degrees, full extension. Flex, 90 degrees. Actually rotate. 